Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jay Michaels in the Passion Pit with some familiar faces. I'm here with Anthony Laura, and I'm here with Casey Hartnett from Face to Face Films. Now, uh, congratulations are in order. Multiple congratulations are in order. So, so we're, we're all looking for some happy things. So, so let's, let's hear about uh, all the good things that are happening with Face to Face. And I'm not going to ask it of Anthony. I'm going to ask <laughs> it of the new producer and partner at Face to Face Films. Ladies and gentlemen, Casey Hartnett. <laughs> Hello. <How are> <laughs> um, thank you. Yeah. Um, so, well, we're working on a reading series right now. Um, so that is um, an exciting new thing that we've started in quarantine. Each month we do a reading of a play or a film script um, with our ensemble and other actors that, you know, we're meeting along the way. Um, so that's been really exciting is to continue working on material, um, just to continue working with each other, even from our homes. Um, yeah, and I mean, we are starting an initiative um, through, through the company. So um, just to, I mean, I feel like I would, Anthony can talk more about, about this as well, but just to provide a space for um, people to uh, see our company as a, as a space to come to if they just need for resources about certain um, stigmatized issues that we all go through because the girl with the red hair, the play that we're working on is about mental health. So we, a lot of our projects focus on that um, and focus on women, women-led stories. Um, so that's a bunch of stuff that we're working on. So the play, we're still workshopping and working on in uh, quarantine as well. So. I'm hearing that, that new characters are being written, that things are being altered all over. When you say resources for people, I, I, I open this to both of you. What do you mean by resources? within this initiative? Um, I just mean, so guiding people to the proper um, places to get, if, if they're, you know, seeking help or with, with any, with any uh, mental health or, um, you know, bullying or a, any sort of thing that, that is going on. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, we'll be providing um, places that they could get professional help. Um, and not just in relation to suicide and depression, but also bullying, um, domestic violence, um, and a bunch of other things that come with some um, problems with mental health later on. And so we also have something that we're setting up where people can reach out to us if they don't find the resources that they need on our website and through the PSAs that we'll be putting out. I'm, I'm speechless and that's rare. Uh, it, it shows you where my commercial mind went. When you said resources, I thought, oh, that's great. They're going to show them where they can get scripts made or, or, or public <laughs> relations or, or how to deal with equity or something. Wow, you guys are great. So, so you're, if you have an actor that's going through something, you're going to be there for them. It's not just come on stage and act, now go home. It's you're going to be there as, as their family, for, for lack of a better term. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I think that's incredible. Please, uh, as, as things happen with that, please send me any information. I think, I, I think that goes above and beyond. It's, it's funny, the name of your company is Face to Face. So it's, it's, it's a very touchy, it's a very open name, if you will. And, and mm -hmm. you're, you're exemplifying that image so completely. Um, I think that's great. Wow. Um, and it's not just mental health. It's like if someone has if someone has a, a financial issue, uh, uh, they mm -hmm. may be pulled out of their apartment or something like that, you're there for them also? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, the thing that we want to make clear from the start is that personally, we are not in a position where we can help people. We don't want to be giving advice to people that we don't know. So we want to point them in the right direction. But I think in the main, at, at least from what I've been finding, because Casey, as she was saying, our play does focus on mental illness and sometimes mental illness can be um, only thought of as depression or anxiety, um, but it can come from anything. It can come from, you know, financial burdens. 
Um, it can come from anything. It might not even be something you know you're dealing with. So the consequences, and this is also something we're workshopping in the play as well, is you know, domestic violence is not considered a mental illness, but the ramifications of domestic violence is. Oh, completely, completely. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, uh, that's an amazing thing that you're doing. Uh, um, what do you need here? I'll now help with your resources. What do you need uh, to accomplish that? Because that's, that's a major undertaking. What do you need? What are, what are you looking for within your company or resources for yourselves to make that possible? So a lot of it's just been coming through research um, in terms of there are specific hotlines um, for suicide, depression, anxiety, domestic violence. So, um, another uh, point is sexual violence. Um, mm -hmm. And so basically it is just about us gathering all of these resources, putting them on our website, um, and then kind of putting it out there that this is not all inclusive. Um, and if there is something else you need, then you can email us and we can look into that further and point you in the right direction. Because I know there have been times when people have said to me that here are our resources and they weren't what I was looking for. Right. Mm. Yeah. It can almost be yeah. automated sometimes. You click something and you get, call this number, but no one really, right. you know, they didn't take a moment to listen to what you needed. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I think for us right now, with the work that we're doing, um, where the girl with the red hair, the play is, a, it takes place in a psych ward and it is about mental health and it deals with very, um, very sensitive issues. Um, and, you know, it's, I, um, people will come up to you after the play and, and, you know, they'll, they'll talk to you about their own experiences. Um, and at the same, like, I love having those conversations. But at the same time, it's, it's, um, I, I, for us, I think it's so important for us to have a firmer place where we can say, if you're dealing with something, then I want to be able to like show you where to go from here because I can only have a conversation with you. I'm, you know, as, as an actor, as a producer, like that is, that is the only, like, I, I'm happy to talk to you, but also it's like, I, I don't want to, we, we can't be those people who um, right. are giving <laughs> certain therapies and advice and things like that. So I think it's just important with the work that we're doing that we do have these other resources that we can provide outside of the play. Casey, you bring up a really interesting point. A lot of times I've seen this in my own world, uh, a director or producer suddenly becomes more than that. To, mm -hmm. to a member of the cast who is going through things because this is an authority figure. This is a, a, a father or mother figure. And so you, they sort of open up their heart and it's a, it's a difficult situation when you don't know what to say to them. Mm -hmm. over it. So, so you're creating this whole avenue. So, so when someone's there within your company, if there's a problem, okay, they can go to the father and mother figure and you're gonna give them proper advice, which is incredible. Um, right. Have you... Have I was you ever just thought about it expanding like uh, to beyond just your companies like so that's actually what I was going to say is the initiative it does not have it's not just with people in our company we are putting it out for people who follow us mm -hmm. so yeah. so I'm an actor on your Facebook and I'm going through something terrible and and maybe I'm not in your production or something like that and right. I can absolutely call you up and say, look I'm having a big problem can you help me Exactly. And that's where we set up the email. We're very clear that it's within 24 hours, you know, because we also want to make, you know, obviously with situations like this, sometimes they're very dire. And we want people to understand that if we don't respond, there's somewhere you should go before us. You know, um, if you are, you know, feeling suicidal or something like that, you know, if you, you know, if you're reaching out to us, you should be reaching out to the suicide hotline first. But this is supposed to not just incorporate the actors and the people that we employ. It's the people who, um, who follow us who are also going through things. The theater community, your audience, your, your followers, all of that. Right, absolutely. Family, friends, anything. 
you are such nice people. <laughs> um, uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm a jaded nosy buddy. Why? Why are you doing it? Why do you feel you need to do it? Well, I'll say why I want to do it is because I have found in my own life that um, I didn't necessarily always know where to go. Um, and sometimes I would be really interested in companies who would offer certain things. Um, and how, how can you expand that to, to help people? Mm -hmm. um, and I think the work that we do, a lot of the work that we focus on um, comes from a place where we want to reach people who are going through um, sometimes rare things. And in the case of Haley, uh, where it's unknown um, and sometimes more um, mainstream in terms of depression. Um, but I mean, and that's something we're also creating with the company and not just with the initiative um, is a place where people can come and feel heard. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's really what our mission comes down to. And, you know, in August, we're starting the reading series by having our first like teenage writer. Um, and it's going to be his first play. So an outlet for young people to where they can feel creative and heard as well is really important. That's brilliant. Uh, the, uh, the new plays every day. We see a new play, but but you're handing it to a teenage writer. You're you. Where the hell were you when I was when I was in this <laughs> way back when? I think that's amazing. Uh, it's very difficult. I've I've seen this on so many varied levels when you're a teenager uh, to step into this industry because it looks so ominous from from the outside. So to have a company mm -hmm. that says, "Come on in." We're going to produce your work, and and if you have a problem or any of your friends have a problem, they can talk to us. Mm -hmm. That's very forward thinking. That's 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 very beneficial. That's very open hearted. Wow, uh, time commitment for such a thing. Uh, uh, are you prepared for for what could be a very big time commitment are, for the initiative? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We are. I mean, like I said. Um, again, it's about being very clear about what that is on our end. Um, it's not going to be where we're going to be on the phone with people, where we're going to be giving advice or anything like that. Um, but, you know, that, that was a question that um, I definitely asked myself um, was, you know, if this goes as big as we want it to, then... I think that becomes another step. You know, right now, I think it's something that can be handled internally by answering emails and providing resources. But maybe when things get bigger, we may be able to afford to have uh, counselors on hand to talk to people and things like that down the road. I'm so glad you said something like that. I'm, I'm gonna ask this question and then I've noticed some of your actors are starting to, to pop in. Um, uh, you're both very strong people. Uh, in my speaking to you, in my seeing the work that you're doing, Anthony, in terms of your, your own work as a writer, I see you're both very strong people. Uh, are you ready for that? Because people are going to come to you and say, help me out, I'm, and that, you don't know what they're gonna say. Are, are, are you ready in here for that kind of stuff? Yeah, we're ready to listen, absolutely. Wow. You're nice people, all right. <laughs> And, and now let's, let's invite your cast in, and then we're going to talk about uh, a piece that uh, it, it, deal, it deals in, in mental illness, it deals in sexual situations. And in this world, ironically, it deals in, in a few other matters. And so let's bring in your cast. Great. <laughs> Hi, Isha. Yay! Hi. 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 How I'm are you? I'm seeing some familiar faces. Am I? Am I staying, or do you want me? Do you Do you want me for this part? Yeah, yeah you can stay. Uh, I'm cool. Please, please stick around. Um, <laughs> Why not? Yeah, there you go. I'm seeing I'm seeing a couple of new faces. I'm seeing some some good old faces. Wonderful. Welcome, everyone. Uh, 
we've, we've been speaking to, to Anthony and uh, Casey about their initiative, which is absolutely brilliant. And then you've all had the gall to, to decide to tackle an amazing piece that is, uh, and you're going to do it online. So, so this is really a thing. You're taking doubt. Wow. And you're putting it online uh, for your audience. You know, it's like, oh, I have an idea. Boom. <laughs> okay. Um, tell me, tell me about, and, and, and the police car goes by. Uh, so whoever's ready to start, tell, uh, Anthony, uh, you're directing it, yes? Yes. Okay. Why'd you pick this show? Oh, so the first thing that we are picking with the reading series um, does have to do with corresponding with the play that we're doing. So we were looking for themes that were similar. So um, it does, the girl with the red hair does deal with sexual abuse. Um, and so that was a, something that we were looking for. Um, and I will say that the final confrontation between Sister Aloysius and Father Flynn is a scene that has stayed in my mind ever since I read it. Um, and the main thing with Doubt, I think it's a very dense play. It's only nine scenes. Um, it's only four characters. Uh, there's, it's, it's harder work than anything I think a lot of us have done. And I don't think I expected that going into Doubt. I hear you. I hear you. Uh, I remember seeing the film. I remember seeing a, a stage production of it, and I just recently read its synopsis so that I'm, I'm, I'm more understanding for the for this interview. And wow, like I say, wow, you take you take the bull by the horns, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Why don't you introduce yourselves as to what roles you're playing and and your own thoughts on this particular piece? Let's start with Isha. Hello. Um, yes, so how are you? And nice to meet you through this Zoom meeting. <laughs> nice to cyber meet you, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so I am playing the role of Miss Muller. And um, yes, like you mentioned before, it is a daunting play. Um, it is it's very, uh, it has many depths to it. And um, I, I feel like we've been very uh, fortunate to have Anthony as a director because he's, he's been so helpful in breaking down the dialogue and guiding us as, as actors to find those little nuggets that may have been missing um, because there's so much emotionality involved in the play. And, uh, and it's also well written that you don't want to lose those little things that give it, give it uh, so much substance. So I've been very grateful, one, to have been um, cast as one of the members, and two, to have been uh, working throughout this time with Anthony to get a better understanding of what I'm doing. You also have a gorgeous voice. Well, thank you so you have a much. <laughs> resonant, wonderful tone. I teach communication uh, at university when I'm not when I'm not uh, uh, staring at marvelous actors online. Uh, <laughs> you have a wonderful voice. Uh, I, I look forward to, to your performance. Thank Vivian, you, you so much. Familiar? My pleasure. Vivian, uh, what are you doing? As are you Vivian. speaking to me? I'm sorry, Vivian. No. I'm going to... oh, sorry, there was like overlap. Um, so I'm playing uh, Sister Aloysius Bovier. Um, it's a rough role. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. This is definitely one of the most challenging roles. And I think when, you know, you're taking on a character that's been played by one of the greatest actresses we have ever known, <laughs> um, it, those are big shoes to fill. Um, but I, I, you know, it's every actor's dream to have a challenging role like this. And so it's been a great opportunity to really like push uh, past my comfort zone. Um, you know, the biggest challenge is really all the dialogue. It's very, very wordy. It's very dense. And um, 
just making sure you're hitting the intention behind every sentence because there is intention there and you don't want to you don't want to skip past that and you want it to be authentic and you want it to be truthful so try, trying to maintain that truth and that interest and that depth in this you know surplus amount of dialogue it's 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 quite a challenge but it's it as isha was saying it's so beautifully written and it really tackles so many complex um circumstances um and i think what's really beautiful about it is it's kind of hard to uh really take any one side um because i think yeah. there's you know everyone has some kind of justification and everyone has some kind of um fallback you know uh, and it, it's just it's really cool it's a really great book Correct me if I'm wrong. You, uh, uh, you're, you're the, the part is a bit older than you. Yes. Um, so that's another challenge. I mean, you know, she's obviously in her sixties. Uh, she was originally you're written. Not. I'm not. <laughs> um, so we're trying to tackle that, and you know, instead of trying to get me to play the character as a six-year-old, trying to explore um, the traditional mindset and the traditional values that a woman who's in her you know late 20s early 30s may have and uh, seeing how that translates and I, it's it is it's been a bit tricky but i think i think we're making some progress with it and you know it's up to to, to the actual performance to see how the audience receives it but it's it's pretty cool it's interesting both you and isha have a, 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 a teacher of mine a million years ago used to say one one facet of acting is forgetting uh so that that everything is 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 real and exciting each and every time and mm -hmm. and considering uh considering the roles that you both have there are things that you have to uh, sort of re you have to almost recalibrate your brain regarding it for for a young person to play that role vivian um uh your your sense of religion how you feel about religion, uh, uh, it almost goes against your age. So it's like you have to create this brand new inner life, I think, about mm -hmm. a 20-something, 30-something who is so steeped in religion and so, so, uh, uh, so tight on such a subject. So that must be quite the challenge. Uh, it isn't, and it isn't, because I do have um, a lot of religious family members and I did come from a very traditional upbringing and I know that I know young people who do have that very traditional Catholic mindset um, my own family member and family members who are young you know who are in their 30s and their 20s um, most recently I've noticed a lot of uh, young Catholic people people and Catholic members are actually trying to go back to the traditional Catholic beliefs in, wow. in as much as, as wanting to bring back Latin sermons. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's pretty fascinating. So you, you do see a lot of young people that actually do hold those traditional values. And so, you know, I'm trying to draw upon that, you know, to make that relevant to this character because it, it doesn't seem like it would be, uh, something that a young person would carry in the, that type of moral compass and being so strict in that, but it is there. It wow. is. I would also just like to say very briefly that when we started the reading series, we did a private reading of August Osage County and Vivian played Violet. <laughs> so that's, you know, it went well. One day you're going to play your age, you won't know what to do. I know. Um, I just, you know, I'm going uh, backwards. <laughs> Isha, Isha, I'm volleying back to you on this. Uh, uh, your character, uh, your character lives in fear a great deal from what I've, I've seen within this show, within this character. So there are things that you, uh, uh, a woman of the 21st century of yes. uh, modern thinking, almost also has to forget. Uh, was that a difficulty for you going, you know, somewhat putting a veil over, over things that you, that you, you know, to be true? Yes. Um, you know, basically during, during the time that this particular character existed, um, there were so many limitations, uh, for people of color in, in America. And, um, I believe that her fear 
um, it's not necessarily, uh, it doesn't, it, it hasn't necessarily been my own experience, uh, luckily for me, <laughs> in so many levels. Yes. Um, but nevertheless, it is um, easy for me to relate to it um, because, I mean, just reading the history um, of how America used to be um, and also the, the current state of America right now, which is based on, on the reality that this woman constantly lived on. So it has made it a little bit uh, easier for me to, to relate to it at a, at a deeper level where I find myself, you know, having to kind of take hold of my emotions because, um, yeah, it's, it's very strong and it's very emotional and it's very real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just want to say something super quick. And this actually, I, I want to touch on something Isha said, but it goes for all four of these. And when Shanley was talking about creating this play, he was talking about how he had to create the conflict of Aloysius versus Flynn, how uh, Sister James is at the forefront, um, and how Mrs. Muller comes in. Um, but the, the role can't be played if you're playing them as caricatures. Um, and that's something that has happened a lot in the versions I've seen, not even maybe a little with Meryl Streep, I don't know. Um, but definitely one of the things I responded to with Isha um, in coming in is that I don't think her and I um, have ever had a discussion about racism in the play because we knew it was apparent. Um, but the way Isha came in and played Mrs. Muller was a completely human perspective of her son. Her son is suffering um, and she needs a better life for her son. And you couple that with what was happening in 1964 um, and how that still is effective with what's happening currently. Um, I think it's the humanity that each of the four of them bring that is very difficult to find under the text and, they, and they're all finding that. Yeah, we're, we're going to talk about the racism issue uh, within this production. It's rather ironic, but up until about a month ago, this play had some particular meanings, but there's a whole new one that, that comes in. So I think uh, uh, I've, I've made this joke many times. I, I ask people, are, are you a genius by accident or on purpose? And, <laughs> and Anthony, I'll, I'll ask you if you're a genius by accident or on purpose in picking this because it's message <laughs> suddenly becomes so much deeper in just the last month. So, so yeah, I mean, I think everyone here can attest that it's no accident. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, no, absolutely. There was no way to know. And um, it's, it's interesting um, because that was something you and I had spoken about, Jay, with the difference in the girl with the red hair. Yeah. Um, and how that would be effective after quarantine. Um, so sometimes, you know, um, sometimes things resonate more. Um, and, you know, it's, I mean, it's an, I don't think it's a great thing that it's resonating more because of what's happening right now. Oh, yeah. um, but I think it does open up the conversation to understand that this hasn't only been in, two, in 2020. The, uh, the, 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 the pagan culture, if you will, the pagan faith uh, talks about how things are in the air and certain people can, can understand them and feel them and, and, and pluck them out of the air, if you will. And I have a feeling this company has that kind of thinking that you know, you, you sense what's in the air and you, you bring us what's needed, the expression is uh, it, it grows where it's needed. And I think you, your, your choice of plays grow where they're needed. So I'm, I'm really impressed once again with this company. Uh, Alex, uh, who are you playing in this? I'm playing Father Flynn. Right. Uh, how's, how, how has that been? How's been your journey on such a part? It's been a trip. It's, it's I mean, it's been amazing. The play is so 
like Anthony said, dense with meaning that it's really fun for me because it's really hard to like not be in it when the writing is so good. And when I don't have any scenes with Isha, unfortunately, but with Vivian and Rihanna, they're great actresses and they're super fun to work with. And then the writing is so good. So I've just been enjoying it so much because it's, they listen, which is kind of rare for actors. Like most actors are pretty focused on like what they're going to do and say and what, you know, insecurities or whatever it's, and in life in general, it's really easy to be in your own head, but they listen and react to you. And I listen to them and the writing is so good. So it kind of has a way of just doing itself, if that makes sense at all. Let me ask you, did you have to make a conscious decision? Now the play is called Doubt and the big doubt regards your character. Did you have to make a conscious decision as to, as to what's real? You know, we, oh, sure. is he sure. lying? I... Is he not lying? Did you, did you, uh, how, how was it in terms of creating that decision as to, as to what really happened with Father Flynn and, and the choir boy? Sure. Well, Anthony and I, Anthony and I made the decision. And He's then... not going to say it. He's not going to say no, it. No, no, no. No, I'm going to say it. We have to see the show for everything else. Because um, you, you have to. We didn't tell anyone else because that would ruin the point because they have to be in doubt too. Their characters don't know. Uh, but I have to know what happened. So for sure. Yeah. Wow. Uh, it's, it's such an amazing topic because it's now, it's so much within our, our purview. It's so much out there. Uh, so when this play was written, it was, it was exploding. Now it's, it's, it's just there, if you will. It's, it's so much part of our life. So that must be, must be, like you said, it must be quite a trip to play that role. Rihanna, tell me about you and the show. Hi, uh, I'm Rihanna. I'm playing Sister James. Um, it's been a really fun time um, trying to figure her out. Hmm. I mean, obviously, I don't have a whole lot in common with nuns, you would think, like at first glance. Um, <laughs> but we've done a lot of research, and it's funny you think, like, online play reading, like how much you know, rehearsal, how much research like really needs to go into that. You're just reading a play. But we really dissect everything. You know, we have our rehearsals. We have, you know, we've watched movies, all of us, um, about that took place um, at this time. And we're set in this time from the perspective of nuns. Um, and I think all of that really, really helps to dig in to a character that you would think is so different from yourself at first glance. Um, so yeah, I think all the hard work that Anthony's put us through, all the research, um, I think it's all coming together. And part of that also is creating chemistry, which can be difficult through a screen, uh, obviously. But everything we put into it really helps and you really feel like you're working off of and bouncing emotions off of each other, even though you're so far apart. Let's, let's talk about that. That's a really interesting thing you bring up um, uh, because your characters are all somewhat cloistered in their own way. When, when you look at doubt, just the word doubt itself uh, means that, that you are in your own box, per se. Uh, do you think it almost helps? Do you think it added to, to your creation of roles, the fact that you couldn't talk straight to each other, the fact that you couldn't touch each other, that, that uh, uh, Vivian and Rihanna, that, that you two truly had to be cloistered in your beliefs, in your, in your thoughts. You couldn't move. It's, it's like we're trapped. We can't get out. Uh, Isha, you, you couldn't, you can't progress in a way. You, you, are, you are stopped for so many reasons. Um, and, and Alex, uh, again, no matter how you've, you've created the role, it's, you are trapped in the, in the cloth. You think, do you think it may have even helped uh, to be in a little box for the show? I think it definitely helps. Um, 
kind of going towards that mindset of, okay, to get to this point in their lives, what have these characters had to do? They've had to give up everything, their family on the outside, you know, uh, getting married, having a family, all these things they've decided to separate themselves from in order to do what they want to do. Um, so I do think in a way that helps us get in that mindset of like being so cut off from not just from each other, but from the outside world. Right. Um, but even within, you know, uh, the convent, you're not, you don't have those close relationships. Um, you know, from the research I've done, uh, everything's supposed to be about God. So you're not fostering these close relationships. You don't, it, it is a little separated, I think. And I think that does help us. I, if I may say something. Please. Uh, I, I feel like this is the, the, the epitome of alone together during this COVID-19. <laughs> um, where we are, you know, in our, even from, from within the play, each one of these characters is like living a completely different life within this world and um and then doing the play right now and with everything that's going on in the world is pretty much like a a, a manifestation of what it really means to be alone together <laughs> that's well put that's very well put and that's ironically what the characters all are uh anthony how was it to direct a play like this uh, distance wise that, that your cast is all on your laptop. Uh, uh, yeah, how so, was it to, to get the message across? So what's interesting is Doubt is also a play about silence. Um, and we can't have a lot of silence on Zoom. So there's been a few moments um, that we've had to actually craft, um, which let me just say is a very difficult thing to tell an actor that I need you to slightly manufacture here um, otherwise. And that could be in the rehearsal room, just talking about, you know, I remember in the last rehearsal, I spoke to Rihanna and say, I think we need to add a line because I need the speaker view to come in sooner. And like something as technical as that, none of them have come to me and say, this is, this is too much, I can't do it. I can't get, you know, it doesn't work. Everyone mm -hmm. understands the constraints that we're under. And, um, and plays like this, and this is something Casey and I talk about with creating the reading series, was that it needs to be dialogue driven. It was something we struggled with slightly with Little Women. Um, Little Women is a very visual film. Um, this is just straight dialogue. Yeah. Um, we have the benefit here of having a cast of four and working with these four actors who wanted to put the time in, um, I think as Rihanna was saying, did make a difference. Um, because, I mean, we got to find things we wouldn't have been able to find if we did two rehearsals and then went up next week. Yeah. Um, and, and that's helped me understand the play more and why I wanted to explore it with uh, the company and with these actors. That's great. That's really great. Um, let's, uh, le le let me do one silly question, and then we're going to hit a really deep subject. So I'll, I'll lighten it in one sense. Face-to-face uh, -face does plays that, see that were also made into a movie. Is that like part of the production scheme or is it a coincidence? Um, well, I'll talk about that and then I'll push it over to Casey too. Is, so it's not a coincidence necessarily because um, we started, we originally started as a theater company and then became a film company and then merged them together. Um, it is a coincidence that most of, at least the first four in our reading series have been Meryl Streep films. <laughs> um, that has been a coincidence, but I mean, it's not a bad coincidence. Not at all, uh, not at all. Um, I, thought, I thought it was brilliant just because I thought, well, of course, uh, you do theater and film, so what are you gonna do? Screenplays, perfect. Yeah. Um, and that was, and if Casey wants to say something about that, is that um, that is something that we look at, uh, you know, going back and forth between 
uh, plays and screenplays to kind of alternate them each month. Oh, I see what you, oh, okay, very cool. Well then, yeah, the, the, that, that's, the, that's the on purpose genius part. Do you see any thoughts on the, on the coincidence of face-to-face uh, -face being staged to screen? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know, because I mean, the main thing we're going after is story mm -hmm. um, and like subject matter and topics that we want to talk about um, and that we want to display through um, everything, all of the work that we're doing. Um, I don't know. Maybe they're just good stories. <laughs> so they were like, we're going to make a movie out of it. Um, I, agree. I, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I agree with that. Good. I will say, though, that most of the films that we're picking are rooted in theater in some way. That's like true. next yeah. month for the hours, you know, mm -hmm. David Hare is a great playwright. Um, Greta Gerwig came from the theater. Obviously, Tracy mm -hmm. Bless and, you know, this was a theater piece before it was a film. So, um, so that is something that I think is important, at least for our reading series, is making sure that we're not choosing things that are so inherently visual. Mm -hmm. And the next, I will say next month for the hours, it is very visual, um, but it is so dialogue driven. There are some scenes that are eight, nine pages of just mm -hmm. dialogue, which is very rare for a film. Mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, what we're dealing with here, with uh, the Shaq. shock on both your faces. I, I guess the your accidental geniuses that you picked things that were on the stage, and now they're a film, and so you well anyway. Um, uh, so I ask you all, and this is still part of the the fun question, if you will. Uh, as as Vivian said, uh, uh, you're doing. Uh, years ago, I I I did a, a production of Guys and Dolls, and someone in the audience had never seen the stage play; they'd only seen the movie. And, and so they came over to me and they said, wow, this was great. And the guy who played Frank Sinatra was really good. And the one who played Marlon Brando was really good. And I thought, no, no, it's, it's Nathan Detroit and uh, never mind. Uh, you are in a play where Meryl Streep did it. You are in a play written by, by John Patrick Shanley. This is a juggernaut. This is not some indie film that no one's heard of. This is a big one. Uh, what went through your heads when you first took it? Did you have that, wow, what am I going to do with this movie shadow over my head in terms of creating roles? Did it become an obstacle? Was it something just fun? Be just before the actors come in, I just want to say that everything that we start, the first rule is you cannot watch the movie until, this, until it's over. <laughs> Whether you've seen it or not, you cannot do it during the rehearsal process. Okay. Yeah, I was, actually, I was actually just going to say that, like, you know, obviously when you're playing a role portrayed by Meryl Streep, you know, you want to be like, you want to do it justice and you want to make sure you're actually at least on par with Meryl Streep, which I think is like very difficult to do. Um, but the fact that Anthony is all about, you know, we want to make this our own. We don't want to recreate the work of someone else. We want to put our own spin on it. And that takes a lot of that pressure off. And that gives us that freedom to explore. And it's saying, you know, well, I mean, they did play it this way, but like, what can we discover in the text? Because I think it, it it's all about interpretation and everyone's going to interpret and receive the text and the message behind the text in a different way. It's going to impact them differently. And so that's the beauty of it is that you get to explore the script original, you know, in, with your own perception and you're able to develop the character in an original way. And so that give, that's, that really is a, <laughs> a weight lifted off your shoulders when you're, when you're tackling, you know, such complex uh, and successful performances. So is it an exciting, and I ask this of everyone, is it an exciting challenge to say, okay, there's that, but I am gonna create my own. Is that an exciting challenge? Is that a good challenge or is that an onerous one? I think it's very exciting. I think, you know, I mean, that's, that's a, we're performers, we're artists, what we do. It's, this is, we live, breathe, sweat, bleed, our, our craft and so to be able to push that and to explore and to discover and to create something new and original it's everything we're about that's great good that's the right answer 
now, now let's get serious. Uh, this this play has two major uh, uh, plots in it of, of great controversy, and just over the last month, it now has three. Uh, number one, you're talking about uh, 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 pedophilia. Number two, you're talking about the church scandal, which which both of these have shadows over us uh, immensely. And now you throw into the fact that this this young man that that is the center of it, is African-American. Uh, how did that change? Let's, let's talk about three and then one and two. How has the current state of affairs changed the way you look at your characters, the show, anything like that, uh, by the fact that this, this young man's African-American? Well, uh, Alex, I'd like to start with you because, because you're the perpetrator in this. Uh, Maybe what, whatever you want to say, it's it focuses on on something you did. Uh, how did it feel to you? Did anything resonate suddenly with you regarding that? For me personally, it didn't change anything because okay. it because if the thing you're doing is reflecting the times, that is kind of a byproduct, I would say, and you can only focus on what you're doing. So Father Flynn has no idea about George Floyd. So wow. maybe, maybe, it, maybe it made me appreciate more as Alex that we're telling a story like this, but as, as far as the character, any work like that, it didn't have any, any effect. Wow. Okay, Vivian, how about you? Um, I mean, I guess it definitely adds a lot of weight to, you know, the story. Um, I'm, I'm just hoping that, you know, in a weird way, it can serve as, you know, a gateway to having a discussion and to reflecting further um, on these issues. Um, because they are still very relevant and because they're still going on. And it's, it's time that we start having that discussion. And I mean, really having it, not just, you know, one side or the other going and, and shouting at each other. I mean, we really need to have this discussion and we need to um, get down to the root of what's really going on. And we're hoping that by telling stories like this and showing the many layers and the many levels to it, um, we can actually start that. Did you find in your character analysis, did you find you had to confront anything that you needed to add to the character or, or even to say, hmm, okay, let me rethink that because of what's going on? Um, not necessarily, I don't think in Sister Aloysius's case because I, you know, I mean, there's, there's parts in, in the script where she says like, we don't, we don't even need to entertain this. Like her mind is focused on one thing, okay. you know, and she's got one goal and everything else that's going to distract her from obtaining that goal, you know, regardless of whether it's, it's true or not true, whether it's relevant or not relevant, she can't even entertain it. So, you know, I don't really think there was much of a shift there. I, it, it's just, you know, she just, she's on a mission. Interesting. Uh, uh, Rihanna, how about you? Now, now it's a very interesting dichotomy we have here because it used to be the young, the the young uh, uh, novitiate and and the senior, the the senior uh, uh, nun, but now you're almost of the same sort of age, so it's it's really uh, equals just in different philosophies, if you will. Uh, has has anything in the current state of affairs altered you in terms of what you wanted to do with your character? I think it has made me analyze a little bit. I mean, so we go back to the 1960s and we know everything that was going on. And you have to delve into exactly what your character's beliefs are. Um, what did they feel about what black people went through in that time? You know, how did they feel about the first black child coming into their school? And mm -hmm. I definitely had to analyze more about my character in terms of, you know, a lot of her thing is she's very innocent. She doesn't 
it's not that she doesn't think bad things are going on in the world. She just has never really experienced it. Um, so especially in a couple of lines, you know, we have a back and forth. Um, mine and Vivian's character is with, she's always asking, has anyone hit him yet? And I'm saying, no, like, why? Why do you think anyone's going to hit him? It's like, she's so innocent. And she thinks that, okay, you know, I don't treat people differently because of their skin tone. So nobody else does. Like, this isn't really, you know, like, why, why would anyone hit him? And it's like, you know, um, I've kind of definitely had to analyze that a bit more in the current climate um, and kind of see how my character comes to terms with learning that other people don't think the same way she does. You know, not everyone is looking on the bright side of life and loves everybody equally. Um, right. So I guess coming to terms with when she starts realizing that in the play. Um, and I, th I think it's definitely hit home a little bit more during the past month. That's very cool. That's very cool. It's, it's, it's a great way of looking at it. I just um, want to say one quick thing. And the fact of the theme of racism in the play is very interesting because none of these characters are racist. The racism is coming from the community. Mm -hmm. What says Sister Aloysius is fearful of people, the children, um, picking on Donald. Um, in fact, Alex goes out of his way, Father Flynn goes out of his way to say, we should not give him special treatment because of the color of his skin. Um, and as Rihanna was saying, she's not seeing why anyone needs to be treated differently. Um, the person who, of course, has been affected by racism the most is Mrs. Muller, as far as a, a full-blooded character in the play. But I think it's really been interesting to explore racism as a theme when it's not coming from the four main characters. Right, right. And, and it's, it's, I'm sure when Shanley wrote it, it was, it was an underlying thing as opposed to uh, uh, in the forefront. Isha, uh, your role has transcended, I think, in the current situation, because there will be people watching this show and they're going to be learning something about the way Africans Americans were treated in the 60s. Uh, your lines, there are going to be people who are going to go, oh, no, we're, we're, uh, you're just going to become more iconic. Your part is going to become more iconic, I think. Uh, how do you feel about playing this role, about, about the character, about anything like that within this current world? Well, um, I think with the current situation that's happening right now and um, being black and the character of being a black mother, um, being so concerned about a boy, um, a black boy, it's, it's, it's very touching. Um, I come from, from, my emotions come from being a mom. I do have a son as well. Oh, wow. Um, and, uh, you know, the conversations that take place um, in, the, in the play uh, when Mrs. Muller is conveying the, the need that her son needs to stay in the school um, and, and also the emotions of this mother that, that, wants, that cares about this child and wants the best for him, but at the same time, she finds herself limited um, to be able to do so because she does need Ali's um, to, to be able to, to accomplish that. And that reality, though it happened in the 60s, it's my same reality as a black mother of a young black boy that's going to college. Um, it's not much of a difference. I depend a lot on, on friends. Um, I depend a lot on communication with this kid. I depend a lot on nourishing um, the idea of a better world and, and speaking uh, positive things and being hopeful that that you know the opportunities can can happen but I know very well from my personal experience and from the experience of this character that if you know um, the sister doesn't 
understand the need of the mother, of this black mother, uh, of her son being in this school and the need that, that the need becomes extremely, extremely, um, how would I, dis what would be the word to describe it? There's, there's such a need, it's desperate that um, um, Sister uh, Eloise becomes aware that my child truly, and there goes mine, truly <laughs> needs to be at this school and be safe and, and, and do whatever it takes so that he could have a chance at life. Um, that conversation is still relevant today. It's, it's interesting, I'm, 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 as I'm listening to you, it's, it's interesting, yes, this mother has brought this child to a school to, to, to save him, if you will, from persecution, mm -hmm. from obstacles, and there's yet another branch of it. Mm -hmm. um, this is a very powerful and painful play, and I ask you all this on this level. You're talking about the church scandal. You're talking about uh, priests who made an oath to the above uh, uh, to not behave a certain way, and they do. Uh, when you came at this show, and this is for Anthony, this is for the entire cast, when you came at this show, what is the responsibility? What, is, what, what did you have to prepare in order to be in this show? What did you have to, uh, you know, I look at it like a roller coaster. I always look when, I don't go on roller coasters, but I always look at when people go on roller coasters. <laughs> They, they all are like, okay, we're going on this roller coaster. <sighs> There's that moment. What was your <sighs> moment before um, starting this play? What Isha was saying was really powerful about how the experience for her now with her son and her character isn't different. That's incredible to me. And I under and at the same time, like not surprising, unfortunately. Um, and I think that speaks to how timeless good writing is. And so for me coming into it, I wanted to understand the themes and the subtext and underlying meaning of the play so well that then I could just honor those truths because they're, um, when it's such a good play, there, there's a reason why it speaks to people. And what you should have just said is, you know, a big reason of the many reasons why it speaks to people. And so that's usually what I focus on is there's things that are beautiful within this. What are they to the best of my understanding and how can I honor those things? Wow. That's great. Mrs. Great. Muller is, um, actually the heart of this play. Um, it is an extremely challenging role um, based on the time period. Um, even if we weren't going through the current unrest of what we're going through now, but when we were casting uh, Mrs. Muller, um, it was clear uh, when I spoke with Casey about it that we needed someone who could also educate us um, because there are things inherent within Mrs. Muller that I myself do not understand being who I am. Um, and, and that is something that we needed to honor and not say, you know, we understand this solely from the writing. Um, and, and again, going back to what Alex said, um, it is about understanding the truth of every single person's um, story, because every single person is coming from a place of conviction. Um, but what the play turned out to be for me, and I'm only saying this from a directorial standpoint, it is a play about contradictions, um, that everyone constantly contradicts themselves, um, whether that be through how they've taken their vows and now what they're going after, the doubt that Sister Aloysius feels, um, even the sense of Mrs. Muller and Isha and I have spoken about this, of 
trying to give her son safety yet keeping him in an environment that is not. Um, so it's, it's very interesting and um, supremely human. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, the, the last line of it, I won't say it, no spoilers, but the last line of it, uh, which Vivian has is, is brilliant because it's, it encompasses, I can't even tell you how much because what is she talking about? What is, what, is, what, is, what I won't say the word. Well, you know the word, but uh, uh, it, it, basically, it basically turns the play on its ear or the, the film on its ear uh, with that one line. When I, when I saw the movie a million years ago, uh, I, I remember when she said it, I just sat there and I was like, oh, that's right. And then this, and then this, and I'm suddenly doing the whole play in my head from, from that one line. So, so good for you, Vivian, to have such a line. Um, uh, anything else you guys want to add about the, about the show, about the production, about the company, about anything like that, that you want to uh, make sure our, our viewers know? All righty then. I guess I'll just say, like, I think everything that we do, we have the very best of intentions. And at the heart of all of it is we want to tell the story and we want to tell it authentically and with truth. And we want so badly for our productions, for what we create and what we bring forth to be something that is positive and impactful and resonates with everyone. And so we fight tooth and nail to accomplish that. And we hope that you everyone receives that they will uh um, i i've seen uh, uh in in speaking to anthony and in getting to know face-to-face -face films uh from what i see you are uh you are open-hearted first and marvelous performers second uh and that is that is something so rare uh to see a company that says okay here we are we're great people here hi how are you and then your art uh, I think what it does, it has enhanced your art. I think it has enhanced you as people. Uh, you are that much more compelling because you're saying, hi, I'm a great person. And now let's look at art. Uh, and, and I really admire your choices and, and all of that. And as always, I wish you the best. May it be brilliant. Now, now I'm going to get on the phone and scream at people to, to come and see it and review it and all of the good things. Uh, so I look forward to the project. Thank you all very much for chatting with me. Uh, it's always a pleasure, and uh, and I know I'll see Anthony and Casey next month uh, <laughs> for for the hours when we could chat mm -hmm. on that. Um, thank you all very much. All the best, and and I, I don't want to say give them hell because it takes place in a church, but, but you know what? I, <laughs> and, uh, be brilliant and be well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you too. Thank, thank you. you so much.